All right, we're on the normal latency server for YouTube. It seems like it's surviving longer now without dropping frames. Okay, is it working now? Mm -uh. Dang it. Soon as I had hope, soon as I had hope, it starts dying again. All right. Well, <sighs> so hopefully it's better. I guess we'll just keep running with this. Yeah. I like, I swear, my network, rock stable. It's always rock stable. I want to blame YouTube for this. I really want to put blame the blame YouTube for this because I don't know what else the issue is. <laughs> Genuinely don't know. All right, we're going to run with this. Um, so this is possibly, this is, well, this is going to be a terrible live stream because of the connection issues apparently. This might be one of the world's first dual handy cam uh, live streams ever. We have dual handy cams. Uh, I don't know the model numbers. I don't know. Uh, this one uh, was my dad's. Bought it I think in like 97 or 98. Um, it's very old. It predates like Hi8 and Digital 8. It's just a regular Video 8 Sony handy cam. This one is a Digital 8 Handycam, uh, and you can actually stream the video over Firewire, which is something I've done before. Um, so this one's actually hooked up through Composite, and uh, this one's hooked up over S-Video. Not that it matters. The quality of the stream, regardless of connection issues, would still be uh, awful. So uh, this camera is hooked up, you can see it here, it's got one of these terrible easy cap things. As I'm watching the connection die. Watching the connection die. Okay. OBS says the connection's back for me, so. Here we go. Uh, it's so this camera's hooked up over this terrible easy cap thing through S video. Uh, this thing sucks. They're like ten bucks on eBay. They probably they've been selling this exact same hardware for probably like ten plus years. It's bad. Um, it, the D linear lacing is stuck on. Um, at least it doesn't auto stretch the uh, image, which is nice. Uh, this camera, on the other hand, uh, we're going through some. Uh, uh, well, just a, a shameful amount of adapters to get this to work. So we have composite going into one of those cheap um, composite to HDMI converters. Then that HDMI cable from that converter is going into an HDMI to DVI adapter going into my AVIO um, capture card that is then hooked up to my laptop. That's like, what, three layers of uh, conversion? It's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's insanity. Oh, now YouTube's recommending to me 2,500 kilobits a second. That's, uh, YouTube, YouTube has no idea what to do with any of this. <laughs> Am 
might as well just bump the bitrate back up because this doesn't matter. The bitrate seems to have no effect on this, so I'm just going to bump it back up to, to 2K. That's got to be good enough for uh, Handycam quality here. So I love that this one is like extra grainy for no reason. Couldn't tell you why it's super grainy, it just is. Uh, this one is really dim, and I thought maybe it's the capture card uh, causing issues. Nope. Um, the composite output of this is just really dark for some reason. And it also makes the table look yellow. When uh, You can see here that this is the correct color, pure white. So, yeah. Uh, let's actually get on to the topic at hand here. Yeah, the weird thing is, is like I help, I've, I've done a lot of YouTube live streaming for uh, helping other people out and whatnot for events and stuff. Never typically had an issue. Almost never really had much uh, issues. Couldn't tell you. It's just me. Of course, it just happens to me. Anyways, so we have here a. Um, of course, the camera view for me is all reversed. This is going to be interesting to deal with. So we have a Dell Latitude D530. Uh, people probably ask, I ask, uh, why do you care about an old Dell? Um, uh, truth be told, I really like Dells, the older ones. Uh, I don't really like most of the stuff they made post, like, 2010. Um... But uh, these old Dells, I actually quite like uh, significantly. And I just realized... Um, yeah, I forgot this dude wrote his like last name on the bottom of the machine. Uh, well, the stream quality is so bad that you probably can't read it anyways. So... <laughs> uh, probably couldn't dox the guy with this anyways, but... Yeah, I forgot. I completely forgot about that. Whoops. Uh, I got this at the thrift store like a few weeks ago for $8. Uh, and considering the... Uh, well, this thing is in... This thing is filthy. Absolutely filthy. Um, if we open up the uh, trackpad here, you can see... Look at the amount of crust we got going on here. This is uh, just... The screen is just filthy. What? I think I accidentally hit the photo button on this handy cam, but look at the screen. Look at this. Uh, look at ooh ooh. Oh yummy. Oh, that's just yummy. We got a uh, we we got a severe amount of gunk. Uh. Yeah. So this thing, I know I say this thing's in good condition, and it actually really is. Um, underneath all the gunk and grime, uh, except for the keyboard. Uh, this keyboard has several keys that are just uh, destroyed. Uh, I, w I keep wanting to say it's in good condition. It doesn't look like it is, but trust me, it is. Uh, one of the main things that uh, really kills these old Dells are the hinges. I know, because uh, my uh, family's... Dell from 2006, and Inspiron E1505, uh, the hinges, once you open it, they have this much play in it. I'm not kidding. It has this much play in the screen hinge. This one, you know, it's bouncy because all of these old ones were, but there's, like, zero play in the hinge. Super tight hinge, which is just fantastic. Um, I think the Latitudes typically have better hinges, uh, the Inspirons really seem to suffer a lot of hinge failures, but these Latitudes definitely uh, latitudes definitely look a lot better. Inspiron 9400 with a GeForce Go 7900. Ooh, that's nice. E1505. Sounds like a broken screw post. Oh, for the hinges. Um, you'd think so. Um, but I've looked into it, at least on my Inspiron. Um, just the actual hinge, uh, the metal, actually just wears away. So there's just a bunch of slop in there. You can tighten the screws down, which will help a little bit. But once that metal starts to get worn down, it's it's kind of just over. And you have to replace the whole uh, hinge 
assembly. There's really no way around it, at least from what I've seen. Maybe you could fashion something up, but yeah, no, it actually, like, the hinges themselves physically wear down, at least on the E1505s, and I imagine very similar Inspirons. But these latitudes, at least from my experience, I, I don't have a lot of experience with these latitudes, but I do know, well, I know I have my D630, which is uh, similar to this, except it's a uh, widescreen. Uh, and I have a friend, Goo, he's in the chat. He also has a D630, and his hinges are also pretty good. So I'm thinking the Latitude, since they were more business machines, just had a uh, better quality. Uh, so let's take a quick look at this thing. It's, uh, it's disgusting. Um, let's uh, take a look here. Uh, it's... So, up top, we have uh, power that uh, takes a PA-12 adapter, which uh, if, you're a, if you work on a lot of Dells, you start to learn the uh, family, power supply family uh, names. You have like a PA-10, PA-12, which are the same, the same voltage. Uh, PA-10 is higher amperage, and this is actually what this came with, uh, but you can run it on a PA-12. The uh, PA-10 that this came with has really bad coil line, uh, so I kind of don't want to use it. Uh, uh, the PA-10 is 90 watts. This is uh, PA-12 is 65 watts. 65 watts should be more than enough for this machine. Uh, we got VGA output. We got a serial output, which is uh, quite nice. And uh, we got Ethernet. I doubt that's gigabit. That's probably still 10-100. Uh, we got a modem. Got two USB 2 ports on this side. We got two more USB ports. We have the awesome Dell uh, hot swap. It's, is it called the Ultra Bay? I forget what it's called. Uh, yeah, we got just these uh, hot swappable uh, thingamajig. You can get a floppy. Um, you can get uh, floppy modules for this. Uh, does this one have the battery connectors in it? It does. Uh, so you could actually get a battery module for this, and I think add like maybe like an hour or two extra to your battery life. Pretty uh, pretty cool. I don't know if they actually sell uh, replacement batteries for these. I do have a replacement battery on the way, because um, this one, who would have guessed it? It's dead. Um, in fact, actually, I have uh, my D630 battery actually uh, still holds a charge. Um, but uh, to be completely honest, it's horrifying because uh, sometimes it heats up like like a lot and it retains the heat. No joke, uh, last week I was messing around my D630 after getting this machine and uh, the battery stayed hot. The, the battery stayed hot for like 30 minutes after taking it out of the machine. And I'm not talking just like, oh, it was a little bit warm, you know, like I left it out like in the sun or something. Like, no, I'm talking like you held the battery and it's like you had to let it go after that long. I'm actually really surprised it didn't like thermal run away from me. So I don't think I'm going to be using that battery anymore. But I have a replacement battery on the way. Also, this said, it says Japan only. I don't know what it means by that, Japan only. Maybe they only use Japanese cells in this one or something. It does say made in Japan. That's nice. I wonder who made it, actually. Mm, I don't see an OEM name on it. But yeah. Uh, the actual laptop itself was made in uh, Malaysia. Uh, my D630 was actually made in Ireland, which is very cool. I don't know how many Dell machines are actually still made in Ireland. I don't know if the uh, factory there is very active or whatnot anymore. The Dell Firecracker battery. I've heard about that um, issue before. That's definitely um, uh, the Inspirons, I think. I don't know if that's an issue with the Latitudes. It could just be like I have a freak bad battery or something. D-Bay. Okay, so it's called D-Bay. Ultra Bay is ThinkPads, isn't it? I think that's what it is. Wasn't there something called a Strike Zone? Yeah, it's right here. Um, I have no idea what the Strike Zone actually is. 
uh, the rubber bump. Oh, that's what that's for? So the rubber bump is just supposed to be for the hard drive to take impacts. I always thought the strike zone was for, like, um... I don't know why. I always thought the strike zone was meant more for, like, um... E-cycling. So that way the e-cycler would know, like, oh yeah, drive the... Like, drill, like, through here or something to destroy the hard drive. That's... I know that's a dumb thing to think, but that's... I, I, legitimately, that's what I thought the strike zone always was for. Like, yeah, here's the hard drive. Here's where you... Here's where you hit to destroy the hard drive. Uh, no, the rubber thing to absorb... Shocks actually makes way more sense. I feel a bit like an idiot now. Uh, let's see, we got uh, audio here, which is actually inside of the hard drive bay, which is uh, interesting. Uh, I think this is a PCMCIA, not Express card. Yeah, this is regular PC card, not Express card. We actually have a uh, an IR uh, window here. I don't know if it's a blaster or if it's just a receiver. It's probably both, so you could have IR communication. Although by like 2006, which is when this laptop would have came out, I feel like that was kind of a dead feature. Nobody really used that very much anymore, but I guess there was still someone. Then we have a uh, uh, Firewire 1394 uh, mini port. What's the actual name for this? Is it just mini 1394? I've never actually known what it's called. Sony called it iLink. So, I mean, there's there's that. Uh, if we open it up here, we can see... I mean, we already looked at it. Uh, it is 4x3, and that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to upgrade this one and get it restored and whatnot. I have my D630, which is uh, widescreen. It's 1280 by 800 so that's actually 16x10. Uh, this, I think, is 1400 by 1050 So that's actually not bad for uh, 4x3. Yeah, 1400 by 1050 uh, I don't, It's not quite an HD or full HD resolution-ish. It's definitely in HD territory. It's better than the typical like 1280 by 1024 you'd see on a lot of PC monitors. It actually does look pretty good. We'll we'll turn it on really quick before we uh, bust into it. But yeah, this keyboard is awful. One other thing that we'll see is um, this says a uh, Core Two Duo. This has a Core Two Duo sticker on it, which is you know nothing you know nothing unusual at all. You know just you know you'd expect that for a laptop from this era. Um, and as you'll as you'll see, that's um. As you'll see, that's uh, that's not entirely true. Uh, let's go ahead and plug this in here. I should probably take the battery out, just in case. I think I did run it with the battery in a little bit, but... Yeah. Actually, it'd be better if it blew up uh, on the live stream, because then I'd have better content. Um... So this guy, like, wrote his name, like, everywhere. It was on the battery, too. I didn't show it. At least he didn't put his full name. He just put, like, his last name, thankfully. <laughs> um, but it has, like, this, like, like an asset number, 831. So I don't, I guess he bought it from off of a business or something. Uh, let's just get this thing turned on here. The F2 key has been absolutely destroyed. Um... It would help if I turned on the power strip for the uh, the laptop. Uh, the only thing I've done to this, other than boot into Windows really quick, is I have um, updated the BIOS. RTC mode. Time and date may be wrong. Yeah, the CMOS battery in this thing is dead. What a surprise. Um... Yeah, that F2 key is destroyed. It's weird. The screen is brighter on the camera than it is in real life. <laughs> um, so I've updated this to A12, which is the latest BIOS. Really annoying thing, and I found this out because I wanted to update the BIOS on my D630 as well. Apparently, Dell screwed up the BIOS updaters for a lot of their old machines, and they just will not work. 
you try to run them and it's like, oh, there's an error. And it's like, it's just like a checksum error. Apparently they like, they changed the checksum of the files without updating the files to look for the new checksum. That's just based off of what I was reading off of forum posts. Dell, what? What? What are you doing? I had to like hunt through Internet Archive archives of like their old site to download the original BIOS installer file. I was going to upload it to archive.org and apparently virus total flags it as having like some false positives and uh, it got taken down. So uh, good job, Internet Archive. I, I don't know how to get that up. I, I, I would love to help people out who have these, but uh, yeah, I can't, I can't do anything. Also, they updated, uh, Dell kept updating their BIOSes for a really long time. This bio, yeah, like, this BIOS is from 2013. Uh, from, like, a 2006 machine, that's pretty good. The stream definitely seems to be dying less and less, which is good. Um... Hmm. 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 Interesting. Hmm. That's a weird way to spell Core 2 Duo. Uh, you may have to put the BIOS file in a zip file. Uh, Virus Total can scan zip files. So I don't think that would work, but maybe it would. Actually, I'm not sure if archive.org actually uploads it to VirusTotal. I just uploaded it to VirusTotal, and it came up with false positives. You like, you know, from like the really random uh, engines that like nobody actually trusts or uses. You know, it's a BIOS update file. Of course, it's going to get flagged with false positives. Celeron to Deleron. <laughs> yeah, so this has a. Celeron M540? I want to say that's what I looked uh, when I looked at CPU-Z really quick. Yeah, this has a Celeron. Or actually, it's 1.86 gigahertz. You can't tell because the resolution is so terrible. There you go. Wow, a whopping 1K of, of cache. That's, that's lovely. Also, I love handy cams that I can, you know, I can just... I just have power zoom. Like, I don't need to zoom in that much, but I can. And I can just easily zoom in. This is so nice. Uh, yeah, so we're not only just going to clean this up, but I am going to upgrade the CPU. I have here a real Core 2 Duo. Uh, this is a T7200, very classic core, uh, mobile Core 2 Duo. Uh, I used a... T7100, I want to say. Or did I have a T7200? I can't remember. It was this awful, like, compact laptop. The, you know, one of the HP compacts after they bought it. Uh, the power jack was completely screwed up. It was a nightmare to get it to run. I used this thing back in, like, 2016. This was the only laptop I had that really worked properly. Uh, 7200, though... It was around that. Uh, that was pretty usable back then. It's still kind of usable. The modern internet has not been kind to these, though. Uh, but yeah, these are super cheap now. These are like $6. You can get them from China. This actually got here remarkably quick. I ordered this last week from China, and it got here like uh, yesterday. That's uh, surprising. Yeah, the uh, the sockets are an issue. I think I think this is socket M. Uh, yeah, socket P. I think is the Penrins. I want to say. Yeah, the whole the whole thing is a mess. You kind of have to look into what the machine actually supports, and uh, what the socket actually is. I want to say the socket the sockets are like almost physically compatible, but there's like one pin that's different or something. Yeah, this is um. I forget what the the micro, or the, the code name for the architecture was for these. 
you can get a T eighty one hundred from China for like a dollar ninety. Actually, I do have a T eighty three hundred actually, um, but I wasn't sure if this laptop was going to support it or not. It probably would have. I wasn't sure if this thing would actually support because I think those are eight hundred megahertz front side bus. These are uh, six sixty seven. The the T seventy two hundreds. I just wasn't sure. So, I mean, I didn't really, I didn't really care. Uh, the T eighty one hundred is probably better than this, even though, you know, that has a higher front side bus, but I think it has less cash. I think those only have like three megs. This has four megs. I want, does this have four megs? I'm talking about this thing. I actually don't even know what the heck it is. It is four megs. Yeah. 4 megs, uh, 667 front side bus. Yeah. Uh, there she goes. Oh, well, it was $6. I don't really care. <laughs> Actually, I swapped the T8100 out of my uh, my D630. And I put in a, a T9300 uh, in that, which is at 2.5 gigahertz. And that was a pretty nice uh, performance improvement. Either way, it doesn't really matter what Core 2 Duo we put in this thing. It's going to be like a thousand times better than the Celeron. Because uh, this is a single core Celeron as well. So yeah, just... Uh, I'm, I, I want to know the story of why it has a Core 2 Duo sticker on it. Like, did someone just stick this on? Did the like palm rest get swapped out? Did someone actually go in and swap the CPU... I'm guessing probably someone just swapped the sticker, maybe to like, uh, maybe they were trying to scam someone, I don't know. But, uh, unless Dell somehow messed up at the factory and put the wrong sticker on, but I don't really believe that. Uh, we're also going to upgrade the RAM. I got, uh, four gigabytes of RAM here. Uh, I know the D630 can take 8 gigabytes, usually. In most most people can get 8 gigs to work in their D630. I don't know if 8 gigs works in this, and uh, 4 gigabyte DDR2 SODIMs are still, like, kind of expensive. You're still going to pay, like, 20, 30 bucks for, uh, for a single DIM of that, and I really don't want to. So 4 gigs is going to be enough because this thing's probably going to run XP a lot of the time, or, like, Windows 2000, maybe Linux occasionally. But yeah, uh, PC2 5300, which uh, should run at 667, same as the front side bus. Uh, yeah, we only have a gig of RAM in there right now. Uh, the RAM is actually only running at 533. Uh, effect. I want to say, I think Dell shows the effective speed, because there's no way that's the actual clock speed. So this at 533 mega transfers. I always end up saying megahertz. It's supposed to be mega transfers. Uh, we got an 80 gigabyte hard drive, which uh, we're also going to be swapping out. Uh, this was on sale on Amazon the other day for like $18. Uh, I used uh, Team Group uh, T-Force uh, RAM in my uh, main computer. Uh, I just uh, never used an SSD from them before. I get weirded out with cheaper SSDs more than I do cheap RAM. I don't know why, it's just a personal thing. Uh, this probably is going to work just fine, though. I mean, this is... There's no way this thing has DRAM or anything. Like, there's zero chance this thing has DRAM. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd be surprised if this thing even has SLC cache. I, I couldn't see anything on there. But... It's still going to be an improvement over the, like, Seagate hard drive that's in this thing. So, uh, we got that for, like, 18 bucks. And, of course, we can't leave that crusty, terrible keyboard, so I bought a uh, replacement keyboard. The sad thing is I bought the laptop for $8. The keyboard was, like, $15. So, this thing is worth, like, double the machine. <laughs> Uh, this thing looks brand new. It doesn't look like... It looks like it's new old stock, so that's nice. I just realized the Windows key is different. This has the older, like, Windows XP 
uh, Windows XP logo, Windows key. This one has the uh, sort of the Windows Vista era one with the, the white around it. That's uh, interesting. Uh, also, we can see on here we got Intel Crestline graphics, uh, which is actually just GMA965 uh, from what I remember. It's got 8 megabytes of... I'm pretty sure it's shared. It, it doesn't have dedicated VRAM. Oh, it's a D520 keyboard. Okay. Yeah, that might make sense. The D520 would be older. So that makes sense why it would still have the XP logo on it. Although this machine only has a uh, regular XP sticker on it. It doesn't have one of the uh, Vista compatible uh, stickers on it. But still, like 2006, 2007, they were, you know, gearing up for Vista anyway, so that doesn't really, uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, I spent way too long in this thing. Oh, it has Wi-Fi, of course. You know, I, almost all laptops by this point had Wi-Fi. Um, that's right, it has Bluetooth as well. Apparently. It has the option for it. I haven't tried it, because what are you going to use Bluetooth for under XP? At least in the modern day. Um, so let's boot this up. I want to say... I want to say there's not anything personal information right away, because of course the guy didn't wipe his hard drive. I've never ran across a single computer in a thrift store that ever had the hard drive wiped. I think I've only ever maybe come across one computer that didn't have the hard drive, and that was it. Nobody wipes their computers. It's actually horrifying the amount of personal information I found on these, just from like surface level booting up the OS and like just like looking at the desktop and whatnot. Like it's it's horrifying. Please wipe your computers. I'm going to switch to this one. Okay. Yeah. So, for whatever reason, they had uh, the old login set up with Control-Alt-Delete. So, yeah, this was definitely a business laptop. Uh, just signing in as administrator, uh, low, uh, lowercase. Yeah, that was full blast. Uh, no password on the administrator account. That's... Mmm. I love cybersecurity. Yeah, nobody is responsible with disposing of their computers. Oh, I for... Oh, man, I just forgot. I have to touch this trackpad. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, that's gross. Oh... Yeah, okay, there's no personal information right on the desktop. Uh, whoever owned this really liked playing those, like, weird casino gambling games. Uh, also, it's in classic theme, which I hardly ever see with XP out in the wild. I'm almost never, I've never really seen that many people actually use classic theme, but there's a first for everything. Actually, I want to say I've seen it before, but... Uh, yeah, this is the only thing I've installed on here other than the uh, BIOS update file. Uh, CPU-Z. We got uh, the Celeron uh, 540. It's like an M540 or 540M, I, I forget. So it's socket 479 PGA. Oh, that's right, it's just called Conroe L for mobile. Uh, yeah, this thing is, this thing is, uh, not very high performance. Uh, uh, the trackpad is really difficult to use with, um, this trackpad, or just with all the gunk on it, ugh. Yeah, this thing, uh, this thing sucks. Uh, so... We're going to benchmark really quickly. Uh, we got good old Cinebench 2003 on here. Uh, I need to turn down the volume. Good old 
good old Cinebench 03. Um, so that way we can compare the uh, Celeron 540, some call it, it's called Celeron M. That's right, these were Pentium M based. Forgot about that. Or wait, no, it said Conroe. Wait, no, that's not Pentium M based. That's right, they just kept calling them Celeron M's or something. It, Intel naming moment. Celeron M was the last used for Socket M. It's actually Socket P. Misreporting because it's actually the Merom L for mobile. Okay. Okay, yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the more and more I've used CPU-Z, the more and more I've realized it's not very accurate. It tends to misdetect things quite a bit, actually. Like, uh, if you like if you run a, it on a GTS 250, um, it'll still say it's a 65 nanometer GPU, uh, even though it's 55. That's just an example I can think of, but that's GPU-Z, but, you know. Uh, same thing, similar thing. They're they're not the most accurate with reporting. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, bust into our drink here. We got a polar raspberry lime. Gonna try to not touch the rim with my gross laptop hands. Oh yeah, that's good. It's actually running faster than I thought it would for a Celeron. You know, this is a single core Celeron, like 1.8 gigahertz. It's actually not running too bad. A lot faster than an Atom. Like even a dual core Atom, this is way faster than that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the release date's also wrong and for the GTS 250. Yeah. I want to say it also reports the 9800 GTX Plus as 65 nanometers as well, and that one was also 55. Yeah, atoms are actually like Pentium 3 speed half the time. So we actually have like a not like completely awful score, 303. Uh... Just as a baseline reference, a 1 gigahertz Coppermine Celeron, Coppermine Pentium 3, not a Celeron, uh, gets like a 112, 113 in this benchmark, like pretty consistently. Uh, and like a mid tier Northwood Pentium 4 gets like, like a 200, 250, something like that. So that's not the worst score actually for a Celeron. But even still, just having that extra core is going to. Not to mention the clock speed and cache improvements. It's going to ax, uh, absolutely obliterate uh, the performance on this thing. Um, so I'm going to clean... I'm going to wipe out the outside of it really quick before I tear into it. Just so it's not so gross while I'm touching it. Yeah. I actually mentioned the uh, GTS 250 uh, because I'm actually going to be doing something with the GTS 250 uh, pretty soon. That might actually be the next video if I can uh, get it out hopefully soon.
sticky rubber off the Latitude E6430. Ooh, that's rough. Uh, I just have some uh, alcohol and water uh, onto this uh, rag. So, uh, just try to get this wiped up. Hopefully, it doesn't take any of the paint off. Never usually had an issue with that with alcohol, but you do have to be a little bit careful sometimes, especially if you're rubbing really hard with it. It's not too scratched up either. I mean, there's definitely scratches, but it's not like awful. Uh, I think that's actually paint rubbed off there. This is like uh, paint. It's like glue or something. Like somebody stuck like glue. Uh, that I think that actually is just like super glue that got stuck to the top of the lid. I could probably get that off with like magic eraser. But then that definitely would take the paint off. So I don't really want to do that. Okay, let's get this. Uh, the back and the sides of it actually are not too awful. Can I get this dude's name off of this thing? Nope. <laughs> no, that is uh, really stuck in there. Uh, no, wait, no, it's starting to come off a little bit. Uh, it's more just fading, the writing. It's not actually coming off very well. Yeah, if I ever feel like it, I'll tackle that more, but I mostly just want to get the dirt off of it and get this thing, like, sanitized, because it's gross. Get this, uh, tape off of here. Ah, oh, dang it, there's one crack in the machine on this, like, thin edge where the uh, battery goes. That makes sense, it's the thinnest part of the machine. Zoom in a little bit. There we go. Um, no, that's just chewed up. That's not stuff I can rub off. Probably will edit this stream down, turn it into like a video or something, just for the heck of it, because it wouldn't take me very long to do. You know, I could probably edit the stream down in like two hours or something and upload it as a video. Because like, how many people are even watching the stream right now? Nine viewers. Oh wow, that's way more than I thought. I thought it was just like two or three, <laughs> based on the comments, but... Yeah, so aside from the paint being a little bit messed up, which is typical of uh, these kinds of machines, it actually doesn't look too bad. It's actually, like, pretty decent. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, but uh, of course it's got a dock connector. I've, I have looked into getting a dock for my D630, and this as well, because I just decided to look it up. They're not terribly expensive. You can find the ones that have PCI a PCI slot in them for, like, 30-ish bucks, you know, but I really don't, uh, I don't really want to spend that much for a dock that I'm never really going to use. Uh, also, it's just PCI. It's not PCI Express, so it's, you can't really, like, put a graphics card in it or anything, like, super useful. It would just be more of a novelty. I'd probably, if I ever did get one, I'd probably just maybe get one of the port replicators. Got 
this random like arrow sticker on it as well. Like, who knows why that's there? Sometimes I really wonder, like, I wish these machines could talk. I want to know the story behind these machines. Like, who owned them and why did they do this? Why did they mistreat these things so badly? Like, it's, it's, it's like, so dirty that it's either, like, an adult who really just doesn't care or this, like, got relegated to being used by, like, a kid at some point. Like, seriously, if you're an adult, how do you, how do you let your computer get this nasty? Like, it's, like, this is shameful. Uh, also at the thrift store was a uh, Toshiba uh, satellite, I think M40 or something. Uh, I thought about getting it, but I was much more drawn to the latitude, and frankly, I really don't need uh, this giant fleet of Core 2 Duo laptops. What the heck is this? I was, I was reaching for the wrong camera. There's like, uh... There's like this weird gunk. Oh, so it's to maintain compatibility with the D600. That sort of makes sense, but that's really unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, it still sucks. I imagine there would have been a lot of people back then. A lot of people back then, I think, would have liked, you know, to use better, like, PCIe graphics cards, but whatever. Core 2 Duo, yeah. I still find tons of Core 2 Duo machines. Like, I've been finding more and more, like, uh, like Sandy Bridge era machines more and more now. But, yeah, I still come across a lot of Core 2 Duos and Pentium 4s. It's probably just the area that I live in. Uh, not exactly very high income. So, that probably explains a lot of it. People hold on to their machines a lot longer. Oh. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. Old PCI cards only ever took up one slot, right? Um, most PCI, regular PCI graphics cards, yeah, are single slot. Uh, sometimes the coolers are slightly bigger. Uh in one slot and you might have issues with it but typically you can fit most of them in one slot oh, it's like there's just the stuff like I don't know if that's like skin gunk or, or what or if that's like some like coating that used to be on the trackpad or something oh this thing is awful it's going to take me a while to scrape that off I think I think that was the old like matte coating for the trackpad that's like scraping off. But I've never seen it flake off. I've only ever seen it like you know, you just wear through it over time. I've never seen it like scrape off like this. That's so gross. Sandy Bridge is the new Core 2 Duo. It really is. And just like the Core 2 Duo, it's gonna have a crazy long service life. Uh, you know, you upgrade an old machine with you know, you put like 8 gigs of RAM in that, put an SSD in there, and it's still perfectly good for like most modern things. I mean, heck, even in my opinion, a Core 2 Duo is still usable for most things other than like high resolution YouTube playback, but that's just me. You know, you have a quad core i5 uh, Sandy Bridge chip, and it's, you know, you're set, dude. Those things are still super usable.
Core twos are going up in price. Um, starting it's starting to go up in price. I don't know if I'd agree with that. Um, maybe not even on eBay. Motherboards, maybe. I could believe the motherboards are maybe going up in value. I don't think the chips are going up in value yet, really. Then again, I haven't really looked for desktop Core 2 Duos recently, so maybe they are, but... I think Core 2 Duos are still mostly at their, like, bottom, lowest end, uh... uh price point right now. Oh, dude, this thing is so gross and messy. I don't really have, like, a plastic scraping tool. The oldest Core 2 Duos are now older than the first 486 on the Core 2 Duo released. Yeah. I mean, the Core 2 Duos are... I mean, the Core 2 Duos are, like, 18 this year. They launched in, what, like... July or August 2006? I can't remember. But yeah, crazy long service life. Chips are worthless. The boards that aren't junk are going up price. Yeah. Yeah, I could believe that. Especially like the uh, high-end SLI boards, like with NVIDIA chipsets, or the better higher-end Intel chipsets. Yeah, I could definitely see those going up in price by now. How big is the dock? Um, the port replicator is only like, like from the back of the machine, it only goes to about here, I think. Uh, the full-size dock with the PCI slot takes up the entire base of the machine, I think. And uh, those have a built-in power supply, where the uh, port replicators, you need, uh, you still need to use your external power supply for those. Do I have anything I can scrape this with? A guitar pick would be, like, really good for this. But I don't have those, so... Do I? Yeah, let's try that. No, oh, that's actually kind of working. Oh, that's actually working wonders. Flash drives are very versatile. Also, this is like... Soup. This is probably the lowest end flash drive I own. Cruiser Blade. I remember when these things were like $5 like six years ago, seven years ago at Walmart. And I was like, wow, a 32 gigabyte flash drive for uh, like $5. That's incredible. Um, they're really slow. Uh, the write speeds on these things are atrocious. Absolutely awful. Like if you get maybe like two, three megabytes a second, you're kind of lucky. Very poor uh, IOPS. Use an old card. Um, that would work, actually. I just don't feel like going to get one. You know, I am in my garage. I don't have my wallet on me. This feels so wrong to do to this trackpad, but I don't know how else to fix it, because it was all, like, screwed up anyways. I feel like this isn't gunk, or if this is gunk, it's, like, very precise gunk. They managed to get into, like, the entire surface of the trackpad. I feel like this is just the, uh, the matte coating that used to be on here, and you know, used to hold up at one point, but it's just it's just given up. Almost there. I know this isn't the most uh, exhilarating thing to watch, but... Oh, how many slots? I, I think they're single slot only. There might be enough room that you could fit, like, a one-and-a-half slot card, like if the 
PCIe card uh, has a big cooler on it. Might be able to make it fit, but I th I'm pretty sure the docks are only single slot. Is that all of it? Nearly. Just a little bit in the corner. Yeah. I think the, the docks with the PCI slots are mainly for like, uh, if you needed like extra IO or something like Let's say you need your laptop, you need like a bunch of USB ports or something, you could add a USB card to that, or maybe you needed like a Firewire card, or uh, I don't know, something. Maybe you need a capture card, you could use that. You know, you. I don't think Dell really intended you to put graphics cards in those docks necessarily, but you can. Of course you can't use the uh, internal monitor, because there's no way to hook it up, you gotta Hook it up to external display, which, I mean, if you're going to be using a dock, it's probably what you're going to be doing anyways. Let's see if I can get in this crevice. I still never found out how you run ads for the stream, because uh, I might take a break really quick, just for like a minute or two. Yeah, there's just like no button for like running an ad or something. Oh, no, never mind, I see it. I'm just dumb. They don't label it. It's just an icon at the top. Uh, I think I'm going to wait to clean the screen until I get it back together. But at least this thing is, like, uh, touchable now, without feeling, like, extreme grossness. So, clean enough to be workable. It's not a perfect detailing, but not that you can tell on the camera. I mean, you can at least see that the trackpad isn't all gunked up anymore. See, is the trackpad like super hard to move on now without that coating? That's the uh, one thing I'm a little worried about, but I don't think it's going to be a big issue. Uh, it's definitely got more resistance than uh, it otherwise would have, but I think that's still an improvement. Also, my fingers are like slightly wet too, which is not helping. This thing hasn't had time to dry. Yeah, as long as you're not, like, actually, like, rubbing your finger into it, it's fine. You just kind of lightly rub it on the top. You're, you're good. Alright, let's, uh, bust this thing open. This should open up, like, most of the other latitudes I've seen and worked on. Oh, I gotta forgot about peeling this off. I mean, yeah, technically this like number tag is part of the machine's history, but I don't care. <laughs> Let's 
So we gotta peel off, not really peel off, but uh, unclip this saw. Uh, Speaking of stream, can you stream in true 4x3? I don't know if YouTube has the option for that or not. Um, they might. If I had set um, OBS to like a 4x3 resolution or something, like maybe if I had set it to 640x480 it might have, but yeah, I have no idea. Okay, so we can kind of date the machine a little bit. Uh, this sticker says... Uh, October 29th, 2007. So definitely a bit of a later machine. Uh, not quite as early, but yeah, it's still well within the time frame I thought it was. Okay, let's get that keyboard off. Now these, one of the RAM slots is under the keyboard as well. But of course we have to dig deeper anyways, considering uh, we want to get to the CPU. You know, I will say this, uh, you run handy cams for a long time. They, uh, they don't even get that hot, which is nice. Like, in theory, it shouldn't be hurting the handy cams any, really, because I'm not running, like, the tape mechanism constantly. Also, the uh, screen flickering is the capture card. That's not the handy cam. Mm. Uh, so that's two screws. Ooh. Ooh, all the gunk out of that. Wow, I don't even need to go super deep for the CPU. Not as easy as the Inspiron B130. But that's uh, surprisingly easy to get to. Yeah, so this thing has... Uh, so many of these keys are messed up. You can see how many of the function keys are screwed up. I... Oh yeah, I forgot to mention this. They put one of the bracket keys on back, like, upside down, and it, it is completely screwed up. It does not work at all. Um, like, I'm missing the uh, this key. I have it. It's just, uh, it, it doesn't stay on anymore. The clips are completely broken. I'm probably going to throw this thing away, to be honest, because it's, it's not worth anything to anyone, really. Uh... So this one was made by Darfon Electronics. I think the other one was made by... Well, we'll look at it. It's not the same company, but... You know, Dell had these OEM'd out by so many different companies. That's the thing. Dell actually doesn't make a ton of their own hardware. They mostly have other companies make it all, and then they pretty much just assemble it. Uh, I, I think that goes for most of the PC manufacturers, actually. They don't actually make much of their own hardware. It's just, uh, just kind of how the industry works. Okay, so we got our display cable. Zoom in. So switch lottery. Well, like it is with uh, ThinkPads. Not sure what you mean by switch lottery, exactly. You mean just like uh, what uh, parts you're going to get? Man, this display cable is like really stuck in there. There we go. Oh, it's because it's held down with a ground screw. Because as hyped as ThinkPad keyboards are, some actually aren't that great to the whole keyboard switch lottery. Oh, that's what you mean. Yeah. ThinkPad keyboards feel pretty nice, in my opinion. I have a T410. Um, they're pretty nice, in my opinion. Uh, like, they're good quality, uh, the keyboards. The, the laptops, in general, are good quality. I'm not going to knock ThinkPad quality, but I think... Honestly, Dell quality from the 
mid two thousands is, in my opinion, it, it's pretty close actually. Granted, I'm just been exposed to mo wow, the CPU uh, heatsink screw had like, dude, these things have no tension. This one's tensioned a little bit. Dude, these things have like no tension. Did that just like wiggle its way loose or like? Yeah, I, I kind of want to say someone tampered with this. They might have actually swapped the CPU out. That would make a lot of sense for why those keys got all screwed up. Like the function keys and whatnot. That would actually make a lot of sense. Well, this is a lot easier to get to than uh, some of the Inspirons where the uh, CPUs are like uh, buried under the bottom. Someone's been in here. <laughs> yeah, someone's been in here. Are you going to come out? Um, is the heatsink going to get jammed in there? Is that what I'm dealing with? Oh, I can already see in the heatsink there's a nice thick... Uh, just carpet of lint around the heatsink. That's pretty typical. It's still gross. Let's unclip these uh, antenna cables. Come on. Are these screws gripping? There we go. Okay, it was just the screws. Had a lot more threads on them than I thought. Come on. Come on. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, not the worst I've ever seen. Certainly not great. Um, let's look at this paste application. Yeah, not great. Certainly not a great paste application, that is. Dry as a bone. Oh yeah, super dry. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, that's better. I don't really have a bra. I oh, wait, I do. A super overkill um, hair, a uh, horse hair brush. Try that. Uh, that helped a little bit, actually. Not a ton, but it helped. Bad paste was used. <laughs> Whoop! Excuse me. Bad paste was used. Yep, that's. It's pretty normal. It's that paste that's like almost a pad, you know. Like, uh, it hardens into, like, a pad. Like, obviously they had just a pad of, like, thermal paste that got, like, stamped onto the heat sinks and whatnot, but, yeah. Not great. Let's use our friend, the, uh, the flash drive again. Who needs a scraping tool when you got a sand disk? Oh, that worked really well. <laughs> and of course, we got a uh, thermal pad for the uh, chipset. Uh, which, of course, it just has dedicated, um, not dedicated, integrated. There we go. The yeah, GMA nine six five integrated graphics.
uh, my D630 actually has the uh, Quadro NVS135, and those are notorious for uh, GPU failures due to thermals. And I actually uh, added a shim to the heatsink uh, to help give it uh, more uh, tension. Don't know if it actually helped any, but uh, I've done it. So I'm gonna go get I'm gonna go get some regular isopropyl alcohol, not my alcohol water mixture that I already had made, just so I can clean up the CPU better. G86 bump gate. Yep. All right, I'm gonna try running an ad really quick, and I'll be back. Ads inserted. Well, I guess we'll see how that goes. I have no long, or I have no idea how long the uh, ad break is supposed to last or not. I assume we're back. No idea. Are we back from the ad? Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if most of you aren't using ad block. So, just totally fine if you are. I, I totally understand. YouTube is completely out of control with ads. So we got some the strong stuff. Actually, you you can find ninety nine percent, just uh, not super easily and. Honestly, the 91 is good enough for almost everything. Actually, I don't even know why I'm cleaning up this Celeron. I'm never going to use it again. Are the ads really more aggressive on YouTube TV? I figured that was just YouTube in general. I have watched, um, I've watched YouTube on TV sometimes, um, and the ads are definitely bad. There's definitely way too many ads, um, which is why when I upload my videos, I try to limit it to like one or two mid-roll ads, like a ad sections because they're going to play probably like two ads in each of those things. So I try to limit it especially if it's a shorter video. And I try to make it so it doesn't like interrupt the flow of the video, but yeah. I I fully support people using ad block on YouTube. Because like, I mean, yeah... Like, if YouTube's your job and whatnot, and you need it to make money, that's completely understandable. But honestly, you should probably be relying on your income from other sources like Patreon or something. Uh, well, the Celeron's clean enough. I will never, ever use the Celeron again, but... It's, uh... It's clean enough. Put the good old screw socket. Okay. Uh, 
here she is. Actually, we can compare the die size. Got a, uh, of course they give us one of those uh, terrible little packets of thermal paste. Actually, I've had some of the uh, Hal, Hal, Halnsy, Hal, 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 Halnsy, whatever this is. Halnsy uh, paste before in tube form. And actually it isn't that bad. It's not the worst, but it's still not great. I'm going to put Arctic MX4 on here. It's uh. You can see how much bigger the uh, the die is on the Core 2 Duo. You know, it's got four megs of cache versus one and an extra core. So, yeah. It's, uh, core 2 Duo is definitely packing a lot more performance. Yeah, YouTube Pay is not nearly enough. Like, I'm a pretty small channel. Uh, I don't get very high viewership on videos, but just based on the amount of what little money they do pay me for the views I get with ads, yeah, I cannot see how you could sustain being a YouTuber unless you have, unless you're getting like four or five hundred thousand views on a video, um, like per video, and you're uploading probably once or t like once a week, I don't see how you could make a living off ad revenue alone. It's just, it's just not enough anymore, and I don't think it has been for years. Like, if YouTube ever did become my job for whatever reason, which I seriously doubt it ever would, but if it did, I would, I would have to open a Patreon. Okay, some of the pins are a little out of whack, I think. None of them are crazy bent. Just, uh, just out of whack, I think. Sounds like pure exhaustion. Yeah, I cannot imagine doing that. YouTube takes their cut anyways. Um... Well, it looks like we're dealing with a different socket, because, uh, okay, so apparently the T7200 does not fit. <laughs> uh, if we look here, the, uh, the pins, if it'll focus, socket M, I've got a socket P, yeah, that might be it, so here's the, uh, this is the Celeron, and you can see the uh, the pins are different in the corners. Uh, so I guess I have a T7200 now to have lying around. I'm going to go grab my T8100, and I'm going to go see if... Uh, I'm going to go see if that will fit. That should, that should be P, socket P. Oh, well, I have a T7200 now. <laughs> Yeah. To be fair, Intel didn't expect the consumer to ever really touch these CPUs, so it kind of makes sense why the numbers and the naming scheme is confusing, but it's still annoying to deal with. Uh, I'm going to go grab that. I guess I might as well run another ad break, since I'm not going to be here for like 30 seconds.
I have returned. Hopefully the ad break is over. Uh, what what exactly does the Penrun have over uh, the cash difference? Uh, do they have uh, more modern instructions? So I have grabbed two chips. I have this one. It's a T2300E. For the life of me, I can't remember if that's a Core Duo, like the 32-bit ones, or if that's a uh, Pentium. Let's look it up. T2300E. E is like the low-powered ones, I think. That is a core duo. It's still a 31-watt TDP. At least that's what they claim, so not exactly that low power. Uh, that's definitely going to be too old. Hello. Thanks for joining. FSB mod to get the T8100 run at 2.8 gigahertz. Yeah, no, they don't sound for the faint of heart. I can't imagine there's just like some, a resistor or something to change out. Okay, so we got our original Celeron. Yeah, I grabbed a T8100. I tried looking to see if I had some other mobile core two duos, but I think this is the best one I have. Uh, this one is out of a, uh, this one's out of my D630, actually. So, a Dell chip is going back into a Dell. Yeah, the core is so much smaller. Because these are uh, 45 nanometer, aren't they? Yeah, the die is way smaller. Uh, better power consumption, I imagine. Oh yeah, dropped in perfectly fine. And since I have the latest BIOS on here, there shouldn't be any uh, compatibility issues that I need to worry about. So let's get that die cleaned up. Actually, let me... Uh, can I take the fan out without taking the... Uh, the the uh, track... Or the... The, the wrist pad. Rest pad? Whatever your arm, your armrest pad, whatever your wrist pad, whatever you want to call it. Well, I can just blow the fan out with my uh, my breath. I think that's good enough. It's definitely dusty, uh, but most of the dust got trapped into the actual heatsink fins. blow this off over here. It's clean enough. There's some surface dust still in the uh, in the fan, but nothing to worry about. So. Looks pretty clean to me. No Q-tips aren't necessarily the best thing to use for cleaning the die because they can leave lint behind, but I always just double check. 
I know people use like coffee filters and whatnot, which I have. I just, you know, I want to use them for coffee, not my CPUs. Oh, let's stick that cellar on in the case. Yeah, so probably someday I'll have a, uh, maybe I'll come across another laptop that actually is socket M that I can use that T7200 in. Do the old shirt clean on the chipset. Good enough for me. It's uh, got some Arctic MX4, which is my go to paste. It's uh, definitely more than I needed. It's not going to hurt, though. Uh, I'm not going to change out the thermal pad because it's it's definitely not perfect looking anymore. Um, I think that's like a one millimeter pad. I don't think I have any replacements for that. It's not all dried out. There's just tiny little like uh, I guess you could call them stress cracks. I don't know. It's it's okay. It it'll be fine. I've reused way worse thermal pads than that. And of course they uh, number these so it's as easy as one, two, three. Of course, I never actually follow the one, two, three thing. I always try to crisscross just so the pressure is evened out a little bit better. Make sure these things are actually tensioned down, unlike the way they were. Looks uh, good to me. Let's uh, get those antenna wires back into the heatsink. It's an interesting way to clip them in there, but. Um, let me wipe this out really quick. Just some surface gunk on the optical drive bay. Now let's clip the display cable back in. Hold up, what? Wait, hold on a second. Just noticed this. On the uh, display cable. It says July 10th, 2021. Like, I don't know how you would interpret that as not being a date. What? How does it say 2021? Huh? Like, how is there a replacement screen from, like, 2021? Or, like, did they just replace the ribbon cable? Who was in this machine in 2021 and, like, 
upgraded nothing else but just changed out the screen. Well, what? That makes no sense. That can't be a date. Ah, that would make sense. Them putting the uh, the year 07, 2007, 10, 21. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah, okay, that makes a lot more sense. Putting the year first. I was going to say, like, how is it 2021? That makes no sense at all. Because I was like... Like, there's no way Dell would have even made replacement parts for this after, like, 2009. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. It's still jarring to see, though. Like, in all honesty, I don't think I would have even batted an eye at that if it wasn't for the fact that we haven't lived through 2021, and that was, like, three years ago. This is me in 2019. I would not have batted an eye at all, I don't think. I'd have been like, oh, yeah, that's 2007. They just wrote it a uh, year first. I hate time. I hate getting old. Not that old, but... It still pains me to realize how fast time has moved. Good to know. Dell's date system. Uh, let's go ahead and pop this uh, RAM out. Never been a fan of having the extra DIM under the, the keyboard. I uh, strongly believe that both DIMs should be accessible from the bottom, but that's just me. So we got 512 megabytes from Samsung. Hot take, uh, not a fan of uh, Samsung, especially DDR2. Of all the DDR2 I've ever seen fail, almost all of it has been Samsung. Could just be me, could just be a weird thing that I've had, but I don't, I don't exactly trust Samsung DDR2 very often. So I've got some uh, SK Hynix. Ooh, I found more crud. Get that cleaned up it's under the keyboard area. That's uh, that's better. All my other DDR2 is fine. It's just Samsung for some reason. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if DDR2 doesn't fail a lot these days. Actually, I very rarely have RAM fail on me. It's pretty rare, actually. Alright, so that's in... Connected the display back up, antennas are back in, Core 2 Duo T8100's in with paste, it's tensioned down, so I think we're good to put the new keyboard on. Uh, well, we might as well put the other RAM stick in now, just for the heck of it. Which is on the bottom. Oh no, you're gonna steal my Windows XP home key. Would be a shame if I were to use a volume licensed copy of Windows XP Pro. Also, very nice thing. I should have grabbed it. I didn't think of it. I should have grabbed the battery. Uh, you know what? I'll just do that later, I think. Uh, 
grab a different CMOS battery, but yeah. Very nice that it's not one of those ones where you have to plug it in with a wire. It's just, you know, in a little socket. go. Four gigabytes of RAM. That would have been pretty dang good for 2007. Uh, you can still activate it over phone, at least last time I checked, but there's no reason to do it when there's like 10 billion um, XP cracks out there that you can use, or you can also just get a volume license copy of XP Pro. Like, there's no reason to go through the hassle of the activation except for just, like, nostalgia reasons if you really, really wanted to. Is there something loose in there? No. Okay. I thought I heard, like, a loose screw or debris in there or something. Okay. Yeah, we'll put the keyboard in and then I'll clean up the screen. Yeah, Microsoft doesn't care about XP. Yeah. Like, there's a reason that, like, there's... I mean, there's... You can find Windows ISOs for, like, up to Windows 7 on like tons of places and like you can find volume license ISOs of XP everywhere for like very easy to find and like there's no reason to not just use those Microsoft doesn't care if they cared they would have taken them down already the nice thing about XP volume license is that uh you don't actually need like a volume license uh, key server set up to actually use them. Uh, you just uh, you just insert the key, and it's just like cool. We're taking your word for it. Just like activating like Windows two thousand or something. Uh, new keyboard is in. Seems to be fitting and lining up fine. Ah, oh, that feels nice. Definitely feels a lot better than the old one. I forgot to check who the uh, who made this. I think I showed it earlier. That's a lot better after being screwed in. You know, I want to say this doesn't feel quite as good as some of the other Dell keyboards. Might be a different manufacturer. I, th I think I prefer the one on my D630. Still blows away most modern laptops though. It's just like a tiny bit mushier. I don't know how else to really describe it. Could just be, you know, whoever made it. Yeah. Let me feel the old keyboard, actually. Yeah, there's definitely a bit of a difference. The, uh, the older keyboard is like, it's more sp bringy, if that makes any sense. Weird. I don't know how else to describe it, really. Uh, let me get my uh, rag to clean the screen.
first. And I'm just gonna use some uh, this eyeglass cleaner. Really all this is is like water, a tiny bit of alcohol, and like a little bit of detergent, I think. I've used it on screens before and it's never caused me issues and it usually cleans it up pretty well, so. So, typically what I use. Oh yeah, it's leaving a bunch of lint on the screen, because of course it is. Don't you just love cheap microfiber towels? Yeah, that's... The display also being in good condition also is what uh, drew me to this machine. Actually made me want to get it is because uh, despite being so dirty, it's actually doesn't really have a whole lot of scratches. There's some nicks right in the center here, which you can't really see. Which is fine, because you can't really see them in person either, unless you're actually like looking for them. So that's not going to really be a big deal to me. And of course it's a matte screen, so... Yeah, it doesn't really matter. I feel like scratches are more obnoxious on a glossy screen than matte, but that could just be me. Um, uh, what I'm talking about is uh, volume license copies of Windows XP. The ISOs are different for those, um, but they just take a different product key. Um, basically, you just type in the volume license product key for whatever copy of Windows it is, which would be XP Pro. So I don't think there was any volume license of XP Home. You just type in the key, and it never asks for activation. That's all it is. It's basically like having activation like pre-stripped out, basically. That's all it is. That's the ISO that I typically use. The only problem is that it's a RTM. It doesn't have any service packs, so you always have to update it. And that can cause it uh and that can cause issues if you're trying to install on like newer hardware, but yeah, it's not a big deal for me. Uh, but the nice thing about a uh, Dell's actually, if you use a Dell branded CD, it doesn't matter what computer it came with. Any copy of, you can use like a Dell Vista disk, XP disk. If it detects that it's installing on a Dell, it'll auto activate it, which is super handy. That's actually what we're going to do. I'm going to put a, we're, I think we're going to put XP Service Pack 3 on here. Yeah, I could, I could hunt down a Service Pack 3 volume license copy. I just haven't because I don't feel like burning another disk. Alright, well the screen is clean enough for me. It's not 100% perfect, but good enough. So I get this little bezel cleaned up a little bit better. Hey, it's Steve. Watching in 240p for authenticity. Thank you. you. YouTube actually wanted me to stream at like 750 kilobits earlier. They actually recommended that to me. Um, is that sitting on there right? No, it's definitely not clipped down all the way. There we go. So, it doesn't feel like it quite wants to go down all the way. <clears throat> well, it's good enough. 
It's not going to interfere with it closing at all. Yeah, it doesn't look brand new, but it yeah, it looks like it could have been the like you know, it's like three years of use maybe now, not like twenty, seventeen, you know, whatever. Let me put the RAM in the the Samsung RAM in the caddies so they don't get damaged. And I forgot to bring my XP disk out with me. Uh, but that's okay, because we still got to put the SSD in. And then after we put the SSD in, I think I'll run an ad, and I'll run inside really quick and grab the, the disk. Yeah, we'll just leave the screws there. It's fine. I would never lose a screw. Yeah, this is a Seagate hard drive. Uh, momentous. It's 7200 RPM. Uh, I mean, that's that's nice that they at least gave you a high performance drive. Kind of surprised it still works. But, you know. I'd prefer a Western Digital, or definitely a Fujitsu. I like Fujitsu drives a lot, but yeah, I'll, I'll take I'll, I'll take the Seagate, I guess. All right. The T Force Vulcan Z. I imagine it's probably original, considering it's only 80 gigs. Yeah, even non-DRAM, no cache SSDs are still faster than a drive like that. I mean, the, the drive looks nice. I mean, it's still cheap, but... I'm not putting any important data on this anyways. It's not like a critical machine I'm going to daily drive, so I don't really care if the SSD is kind of cheap and maybe a bit questionable. be really cool if on modern laptops they still had this but it was just like a, an m.2 little thing that you could pop out you know they would they, but they would never do cool stuff like that anymore is that screwing down what the heck okay that one screwed in is the is the ssd screw stripped out not the screw, like the screw hole on the SSD. Is it stripped out? No, okay, it just wasn't gripping. That's really weird. Okay, oh, it's in there. Ah, uh, let's boot it up really quick. Before I go grab the, uh, the, uh, the CD.
Yeah, no, I will never stop dunking on modern laptops. Like, I'm using an Asus VivoBook right now. Um, don't get me wrong, it's a nice laptop. I love I love it because it has an OLED screen. That's uh, kind of the main thing that I wanted and I liked about it. But, like, half the RAM is soldered, no Ethernet port, upgradability is not great. Uh, it's just annoying. I mean... Modern laptops are great. I just really wish they were more repairable. I, after uh, the Vivo book um, enters retirement for me, I'm probably gonna buy a framework um, power cable. There's the hole. That's the S Vivo port. Why is the caps lock light flashing? Hmm. Okay, it's not happy about something. Hmm. Okay. It's odd. I ran into this issue. I think I, I want to say I ran into this issue with the uh, when I upgraded the CPU on the B130 Inspiron, and I had to like take the CPU out and put it back in. I really hope I don't have to do that. Yeah, just like the just the caps lock light is flashing, and the uh, the power light is on. Nothing on the display. It's not even lighting up. Hmm. It's not beeping or anything, though. That's the weird thing. I guess I could just let it sit. I don't think that's going to help it, though, but... Yeah, I didn't even power up the fan. Huh. It's odd. Oh, did that disconnect, or...? Okay, I think it just turned itself off. Hmm. Nope, it's doing the same thing again. Hmm. It's on the latest BIOS, so I don't think that's an issue. Um, see if I can figure out what flashing caps lock means. Maybe that's RAM? Maybe the RAM's bad? Blinking caps lock seems like a memory error. That's what it's coming up as. Okay. Um, that's good. That means it's not CPU. That was uh, my fear, is that it was going to be CPU. Somehow my chip had died or the machine didn't like it for some reason. Um, let's try the one down here first. Maybe, uh, maybe it, uh, just needs to be reseated. If not, I get to take the keyboard back off. Yay. Hopefully it doesn't have an issue with, like, uh, dual rank RAM. Uh, no, the Samsung RAM was two rank. I mean, this is two rank by eight. The Samsung RAM is... 2 by 16. I don't think that would matter, though. Okay, so that's... See the back end. Like, I just got this RAM, and it was from China, so I mean, like, 
Who knows, the ram could just be bad. Um, it's giving more life. The uh, CD drive actually, like, seeped. Okay, now it's just powered up. Caps Lock is not blinking anymore. But it's still not outputting anything to the screen. The hard drive light flashed a little bit, which is interesting. Hmm, so the hard drive light blinked like twice. Uh, there's still nothing on the screen. I almost wonder if the, uh, the little switch... I almost wonder if the little switch here is like, uh sticking down or something, causing the machine to go into, like, standby. Well, we fixed the one error. Now he's out of the T7700. Okay, interesting. So, CPU might not be supported. Yeah, I usually take the support threads that list uh, CPU support, usually with a grain of salt, too, because I've definitely seen them be not uh, accurate. Okay, no, it's not... Okay, it wasn't that issue. Yeah, it might not just it just might not support penrins, which is going to be really unfortunate cuz I don't have anything else to put in there. Unless I wanted to like uh open up my like mid 2009 MacBook and steal the T7250 out of that. Which is really weird, like it's a it's a 2009 MacBook, but it still has a T7250 in it. That would basically be my only other option, because I don't have any other chips. Hmm, okay. BIOS mods for adding Penrin. Still doesn't change the fact that I'd have to pop the CPU back out. <laughs> Pop the Celeron back in, and then do all this stuff. Um, I'm going to try undoing the RAM from here, just see if that changes it. Yeah, there's a bit of schmutz on this pin, I think. On the RAM, so maybe that has something to do with it. Okay. It's a bunch of work, but I love these old Dells, so... Oh. Okay. Well, that's new. Uh huh. Maybe I'm onto something with the RAM. That definitely looks like corrupt video memory, potentially.
Now the hard drive light is blinking a bunch. Okay. And it does not want to power off. Okay. Unplug it, plug it back in. Okay. Ooh, yeah. This definitely seems like RAM. It is showing splash screen, which means the CPU is at least partially functioning. Um, and usually bad CPUs are either dead or, you know, they're just dead. Like, very rarely do you see a bad CPU that causes issues like this. So I'm going to pop the Samsung RAM back in. Um, I may go steal the RAM out of my D630, try that in here, and see if, uh, see if that works. Um, if it does, I'll put the the new RAM that we tried in here, I'll put that in the D630 and uh, run like Memtest86 on it just to see if that uh, that clears it up. Yeah, if it passes Memtest86, then I guess it just really doesn't like this machine. And if it doesn't, then I guess someone's getting an eBay refund. Let's see if it's just that stick that's bad. And I dropped the cord. Oh, fun. Gotta reach under the table now. There we go. Alright, let's see. Yep. Yep, so that stick is bad. That or the uh, slot is very flaky now. But no, that I think that I think this uh, stick of RAM is uh, questionable, to say the least. The chips are branded Hynix, so it's not like they took some random dim and stuck a Hynix label on it. Um, just waiting here, but this tends to happen a lot after you uh, swap memory on these Dells. It just waits and waits forever. So I'm going to go grab my D630. Um, well, actually, I might just stick both Samsung sticks back in, because we don't need 4 gigs of RAM to run Windows XP, really. But Yeah, well, I can swap the RAM out of my D630, I think, pretty quick. Uh, because, I mean, I gotta test this RAM anyways, just so I can message the eBay seller, like, hey, it's bad. I mean, they'd probably take my word for it without needing evidence to begin with, but I don't feel like, uh, I don't feel like trying to argue with them about it, so I'm gonna run an ad, and I'll go grab that really quick.
my baby. Fifteen oh one. I want to say that's DDR two. Yeah. So I really got my my baby, my D six thirty. This thing's in like, aside from the weird little marks at the top of the screen lid, near immaculate condition. I got super lucky when I found it. It was like they did not use it at all. I have, um, actually I just put XP on this recently. I had Vista on it for a long time, but only Vista 32-bit. Fortunately, you can't run 64-bit Vista on these very well, because um, the, uh, the trackpad driver, there's no 64-bit version of it for Vista. It's really annoying. I mean, I could probably track it down. There's, there's probably somewhere online I could find it, but... It's not on Dell's website, which is really annoying. Uh, okay. Right, my D six thirty is better than yours. Come on. Pop oh, that's right. These have an extra screw. Yeah. Like, especially trying to get 64 bit drivers for uh, XP 64 bit, really challenging sometimes. Uh, well, I know I, I I know I talked bad about Samsung RAM earlier, but here's Samsung DDR2 that works still, so proved me wrong, I guess. Ninety percent of the stuff they sell isn't actually tested, and it's. They probably have it figured out that it's cheaper to do refunds on eBay for the parts that don't work than it is to actually uh, have a have people test every single part. I guarantee that's probably how it works. It just makes more sense for them to just eat the uh, refund costs. But we'll see. We'll try the I'll try the Hynix RAM and the uh, in the D six thirty later, and uh, see if I can boot mem test. If I can't, then well, I'll have to get a refund and buy another four gig kit. Maybe I'll maybe I'll finally go out and get a, a eight gigabytes of RAM for this machine. Oh no, my Vista business. OEM key is going to get stolen. Oh no. Would be a shame if someone stole it. Not that you can read it. Yeah, there's the Made in Ireland. That makes me really happy. I'm like half Irish. Oh. Cool, the RAM doesn't even match. I, I forgot about that. 
So we got a we got a micron stick and a Samsung stick. We're gonna Yeah, we'll just uh we'll ignore we'll just uh ignore that. Uh these are um eight hundred megahertz, so uh, the other RAM is only 667. Not, I'm, I'm pretty much figuring it's already not going to work, in even in the D630, but I am going to lose front side bus speed. I was wondering where the other stick was, and I forgot I didn't take it out of the, the 530 yet. Put the Samsung stick in the bottom of the 530. So close up the D630 really quick. Alright, so the Samsung sticks in the bottom of the 530. We're gonna pop the Micron stick in under the keyboard. Apparently the Micron sticks out of an HP because it's got one of those replaced with HP spare stickers on it. Right, I bet that this thing's gonna work like first time, no problem. Nope, it's blinking the hard drive light again, so. Probably didn't get the keyboard one seated right. It's a little finicky to get in with the uh, keyboard ribbon cable in the way, but. Nope, it's still doing it. Interesting. Almost wonder if maybe the slot is bad. Or it's like really flaky. That or I need to reseat the Samsung stick. Could be that. Is there any debris on the pins? No. There's no debris in the slot. Oops. Come on. Same thing. Okay. Let's uh, reseat the Samsung stick really quick. 
Unless it really doesn't like 800 megahertz RAM for some reason, which would be weird. I don't think... Normally it would just downclock it. I don't think it would care about having faster RAM in it, but... You never know. It's not blinking now, but it's also not doing anything. <laughs> okay, so maybe it's just really flaky on the ra on what RAM it wants. Does this machine only have like unofficial 4 gig RAM support or something? And it's like just really picky about uh, what kind of RAM it likes to use? Nope, it's flashing the hard drive light again. Let's see what that error code is. That might be useful to actually look up. Well, one thing says it's possibly a processor failure, which doesn't make sense, but that could make sense if it's not actually supported correctly. Hmm. Okay. So, hmm, I guess I'll try the RAM it came with. So, we'll try, I guess we'll try the RAM it came with then. So I don't really know what else to try at this point, other than a different CPU, which I don't have. The only thing left to try would be putting the seller on back in and yeah and like the core duo isn't going to work because that's too old because it's socket M I want to say I guess worst case scenario if it is the CPU it's unsupported um, I'll probably just call it a night and maybe I'll Maybe I can stream it again another day after I get a better CPU. Maybe I'll get like a, a T7250 or uh, something else. No, there's no way that's how the RAM sits in there. Get in there. Let's see, will it work? Oh. Yeah, I forgot to unplug the laptop and uh, it decided to turn on. Whoops. Oopsie. Well, it gave me more life now. The hard drive, or the disk drive actually seeped. Okay, it's flashing again. Yeah, I'm sure uh, swapping your RAM while the machine was still plugged in, I'm sure that's uh, that's how you're supposed to do that. Uh, <laughs> so swap the stick. And see, if it doesn't work then, 
ah, it, it has to be the CPU then. Like, Penrun support, like, is only, like, barely functional. And you need to actually flash, like, a hacked BIOS or something. So I bought a CPU that's not compatible. I bought RAM that's potentially the... It's already turning on. Okay, so... Okay, so what we've learned. It really likes less than four gigs or four gigs of RAM. Potentially it doesn't like eight hundred megahertz RAM. Okay. <laughs> Don't know why that would suddenly matter, because it should just downclock it if it doesn't like it, but okay. Well, I guess we'll just wait for that to do its normal thing. I think it's doing like a full RAM check or something. Come on. Hurry it up. It's only one gig of RAM. How long does that take you to check, dude? Yeah, it is really weird. It could just be the freak scenario of amount of sticks and whatnot that I have that it's causing issues. Maybe it really is picky about not having mismatched sticks or something. I don't know. It's still waiting, though. I Like, this takes a while, usually. I don't think I've ever seen it take this long to wait, though. Because normally after this, it'll beep twice, and then it'll... Say press F1 to continue, F2 to run setup. It's not, I mean, not, no lights are blinking. The machine is running, so the CPU works to some extent. I might just power it off and turn it back on if it doesn't do anything within the next like minute or two. Cause that's an unusually long amount of time to wait. That is true. Could be the CPU is um because the CPU is incompatible and it's causing it to hang. Could also be why the RAM doesn't work right. Is the CPU is just Support is just really flaky. Yeah. You're probably right. I, I, I think it probably really wants uh, the Merum. Merom? It's, it's gotta be Merum. Uh, CPU. Yep, now it's, uh, it's doing the... Uh, it's flashing the hard drive light again. So, so it, it's just barely able to boot the BIOS sometimes. Maybe with just the right uh, RAM configuration. Nope, flashing again. Yeah. Okay. 
So, it's it doesn't support Penryn, but it is socket P. So, yeah, seventy two fifty would be best for thermals. I'm not going for crazy high performance because I already have the D six thirty with the T ninety three hundred in it. And that's already my high performance, you know, core to dual laptop. So, uh, I think I'll call it a night then, because if I swap the seller on back in and then go through and reinstall Windows, yeah, yeah, it's gonna take forever still. Yeah, I might be able to find a T7300. Actually, I'm, I'm going to look on eBay really quick right now just to see. They can't be more than like $10, right? Because like not that many people care about them. Yeah, here's, yeah, there's one for like $6 right now. And it's in the U.S. It's coming from Texas as well, so... Yeah, I might just hop on that really quick. Yeah, and it would be 800 megahertz uh, front side bus, so that would be uh, that'd be nice. Of course, then my RAM would be incompatible. What? Okay, it's just like it the the machine randomly turned back on for some reason. Yeah, I could just go with the 7250 as well. But, I mean, there's one for like $6. So, I mean, I doubt I'm going to find a 7250 for cheaper than that. Yeah, most of the 7250s I'm seeing are actually more than that one. So, I think I'm going to buy that. Yeah, so that Hynix RAM actually probably is okay. Um, so I'll probably I'll buy probably get the seventy three hundred since it's it doesn't cost that much. That Hynix RAM probably is okay. I'm gonna run it uh, through MemTest on my D six thirty. And we'll see how that goes, but, uh, yeah, I, it's probably CPU. We've tried so many different RAM combos that I don't think it's RAM. I think it's got to be the CPU. It just has flaky pen run support. That's probably it. Could hack, could try the hacked BIOS or whatever, but I don't really feel like doing that. So, uh, <laughs> uh, the internet decides to die a little bit right at the end. Okay, it's recovered. Wow, that was two and a half hours, and we didn't even get to a functioning machine. Mmm, I love technology. So... Uh, that's going to be it, then, for this stream. Uh, I'll probably just keep the Handycam stream set up going, because I legitimately don't have any other cameras to do this with. None of my other cameras have clean, like, HDMI outputs, so I can't even use them for streaming. So I might just keep the Handycam thing. That, that might just be, like, my thing that I do for streaming. I don't know, it's dumb, but it, I mean, it works. So, yeah, the hacked BIOS is, yeah, is probably more work than it's actually worth. So, uh, thanks for joining uh, the stream, everyone that did watch. Not that many of you joined, but hey, the few of you that did, thanks for thanks for coming along. Uh, I'll, I'll probably try to stream the second half of this once I get the proper CPU that'll actually work and uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. 
So uh, thank you for joining, and uh, I'll see you guys next time, whether it's a video.